your fantasy football league mates are idiots. I now declare this freaking idiot convention open. Most of y'all probably think I'm an idiot, which is a very fair opinion, but I've made this video a few times. I did two parts of this video last year. Seven players to let your idiot league mates draft in fantasy football. I'm doing seven today. Last year, I did two parts of this, five players each. Here are the list of players I told y'all to let your idiot league mates draft last year. You can go verify it. The videos are on YouTube. They're live. They're public. They're on the fucking blockchain. Saquon Barkley, Michael Thomas, Kareem Hunt, Raheem Mostert, Patrick Mahomes, Matty Ice, Kyle Pitts, OBJ, Juju, and James Robinson. I can go down that list and tell you why I hit nine out of 10 there. The only one I would say was a huge swing and miss was James Robinson. And that video was made pre Travis Etienne injury. Had I made that video after the Travis Etienne injury, he obviously wouldn't have been on that list. But you have to remember, every one of those guys last year, very easy to go hindsight and say like, oh, those are obvious avoids. No, they weren't at the time. There was a cult following. There was an entire fucking brand of people that loved every player on that list for stupid ass reasons. Most of them were very, very obvious as to why you need to fade them. A lot of them revolved around injury optimism. Take one Barkley coming off the ACL tear. Michael Thomas, OBJ, like... All of these guys were going in the, well, Saquon was a first round pick. His ADP last year by the time drafts hit were six overall. Michael Thomas, OBJ, they're all like fifth, sixth, seventh round picks. So easily avoidable. So we're going to run this shit bike and hit you with seven players to let your idiot league mates draft in 2022 fantasy football. Y'all know what we got to do. Tuck the shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's see. Prize picks, don't you ever disrespect me sitting there with Traylon Burks 850 receiving yards like he AJ Brown. You heard? We can grab that right now. We can smash the under because he is the first player on this list in which you should be letting your idiot league mates draft in 2022 fantasy football. Something I like to say throughout the offseason and the summer is that when there's smoke, there's fire. Every player gets hyped. They go from fucking mixtape to a platinum artist, the way that people talk about them in the summer, man. So when there are negative reports, you have to take notice and take it seriously, especially when it starts coming from all different angles. With Burks, I will say there's not anything in particular that's like overly concerning, but I'm like yet to see a single positive report come out of camp as it relates to him. We have beat reporters, we have coaches, we have just people from the athletic, just everywhere. They don't think the Titans are content at wide receiver, could add another vet before the season. Traylon Burks has asthma, keeps missing fucking practice times, unavailable for Titans minicamp. He projects to be the number three wide receiver. Robert Woods should be the Titans number one option in week one if he's healthy. At some point, you want the beat reports to come in and say like, yes, we're starting to see Traylon Burks take over that AJ Brown role. Yes, we're seeing, we're starting to see this freak athlete dominate camp. Because when you're in shorts and you're an amazing athlete, that's what you should be doing. But we're not hearing that stuff. Again, when you start getting the reports from coaches, from beat reporters, from players, when there's smoke, there's fire. These are the things to take seriously during camp throughout the summer practices, folks. We'll see if the tune changes. But right now, Burks is going off at like pick 80 in the seventh round. That is insane to me. He's going ahead of guys like Brandon Ayuk, Alan Lazard, Sky Moore even, Kadarius Toney. I'd take Alave over him. Let your idiot league mates tell you that he's going to be A.J. Brown with the role in production. Next up on this list is a two-time offender. It's Patrick Mahomes. Listen, Josh Allen is a clear quarterback one right now, but Mahomes is still going anywhere you look at ADP. I don't care. It's sleeper, if it's underdog, wherever you're looking at, Mahomes is still going above guys like Justin Herbert everywhere. So he's really, really high up on the list. Last year, we faded him because he was the quarterback one going into the year, ended up at like quarterback four or five. So an easy fade there. Again, at quarterback two, another year of easy fading for Mahomes. If you're comparing the two like Herbert to Mahomes, Herbert is in a better offense right now. Better weapons, better offensive line, higher pace. They're running more plays. Patrick Mahomes just lost Tyreek Hill. Kelsey's getting older. We don't know what that fucking group of weapons that they brought in for, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster, Sky Moore, MVS. Like, we don't know what's going on here. It's like, oh, cool. They added me, Cole Hardman again. I mean, MVS. Cool. They added another fucking TikToker to throw on their sideline and Juju. And I like Sky Moore, but again, it just feels like they're throwing shit against the wall and hoping that someone emerges as like a 70% of Tyreek Hill. Like, it's, it's, it's Mahomes. He'll do fine. He'll do good. He's not going to lose your fantasy league. But to grab him at quarterback two because his name is Patrick Mahomes, he's not giving you the statistical season that he was a few years ago. Pass on Mahomes. Let someone else take him. Antonio Gibson, all right? I've talked about A. Gibby at nauseum, and it's not even July yet. I feel like it's going to get to the point where he gets pushed back to be like an eighth-round pick come September. But everything about his situation is disgusting. J.D. McKissick got re-signed. There goes most of the pass catching work. Gibson already ranked 22nd among running backs in targets last year, 42nd in route participation, 39th in yards per touch. They draft Ryan Robinson. 
this is going to be a split backfield. And like the one thing Gibson really had going for him last year was the goal line work. And now I'm not super confident that he gets all of it, which is what he needed in order to be fantasy viable last year with Brian Robinson in the mix. This offense might be awful too. They were bad last year with Taylor Heineke and transparently like Wentz, I think is about five times better. Taylor Heineke deserves to just be like a spokesman for Heineken. That's like what his full-time job should be. There's no reason he should have been let on an NFL field last year. Wentz is above that. So hard to say that they're going to be worse than they were last year, but I still don't see this offense being very good. Prize picks moved his line down from 1050 to 850 rushing yards for the season. We, we nailed that at 1050. That was in like every prop I took and every prop I told y'all to do. So that should tell you something. So let your idiot league mate tell you that Antonio Gibson was a wide receiver in college and that's why he's going to catch passes this year because he's not ken walker also not catching passes this year that sounded really weird coming out of my mouth i don't know why i wrote ken walker in my notes kenneth walker thy third seattle seahawks second round running back pick and very similar to gibson i've been on the anti walker train in terms of drafting him in redraft leagues all offseason he's going to be a good nfl player but non-first round rookie running backs take time to get real fantasy viable work all right almost every hyped too talented to fail second round rookie running back over the last two, three, four years. Didn't do shit until week eight, nine, 10, 11, Swift, Sanders, Akers, Dobbins, Taylor, like all of these dudes. It's the way the shit works. It's a very clear trend. And it's Rashad Penny's job for the time being. They've already come out and said that. And in Pete Carroll's tenure in Seattle, 12 years, there there hasn't been a lead back there the, the back that led the team in rushing that's had more than 37 catches. I'm just not sure what we're actually getting out of Kenneth Walker this year out of like a handful of games where he gets like 14 carries. That's not exciting whatsoever. This team is going to be terrible. The quarterback play is going to be bad. Maybe they bring in Baker Mayfield, but they just dropped, PFF just dropped their offensive line rankings and Seattle's dead fucking last. This team is going to be miserable and they run the fewest plays per game. They're the slowest pace offense in the NFL. Drafting Kenneth Walker this year is like drafting Michael Carter last year, if we thought Michael Carter wasn't going to catch any passes. Like, that's what he is this year, Kenneth Walker. Let your idiot league mates tell you that Kenneth Walker is an elite talent. Therefore, he can't be bad for fantasy football this year. Same thing with Clyde over Tulare, man. I, I can't believe people still need me to say this. Clyde, homies, just Clyde isn't good anymore. He's just, he, the Chiefs are wrong. That's really what it comes out to. The Chiefs were wrong. They continue to bring in vets, and these vets continue to supplant CEH year over year. It's 30-year-old Le'Veon Bell. It's Darrell Williams. It's Jerick McKinnon. It's Damian Williams. Like, if any of these guys were ripping away work from, like, DeAndre Swift or Jonathan Taylor or whoever, we'd lose our fucking mind. McKinnon was re-signed. He's going to have a sizable role. He was awesome down the stretch last year, averaging over 17 opportunities per game. They brought in Rojo, who's going to have a role. Wouldn't be surprised if he was the goal line back here. We literally don't even know what CH's role is at this point, so stop drafting him in single-digit rounds. Let your idiot league mates tell you that he was played at 160 pounds last year or some shit, and that's why he wasn't good. Let your idiot league mates do that. Number six on this list, and if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you're listening via podcast, rating and review would be very much loved. And subscribe to the channel if you're new, obviously. We're doing all fantasy football videos every single day. DJ Moore, ripping off 1,000-yard seasons every single day, but it does not matter. Let your idiot league mates tell you that DJ Moore's breakout age in college was in the 97th percentile. Who gives a fuck? If you look at his fantasy points per game, half PPR, the four seasons he's been in the NFL, 8-1, 12-5, 11.9, 11.1. The number of wide receivers, right? So he's gone over 11.5 twice. He's gone under twice. That's about the average of where he consistently settles in at in half PPR. The number of wide receivers that annually hit 11.5 or more half PPR fantasy points per game, dating back four years ago when he started to 2021. 22, 28, 28, 25. DJ Moore. Good at football, extremely replaceable in fantasy football. Again, like people keep saying this, that it's his floor, what he's been doing the last few years. is 80 catches, 1,000 yards. It's his floor. It's his floor. No, dude, it's literally his average. When you do it over and over and over again, it's your fucking average, not your floor, which means he can go above, he can go beyond. But with Sam Darnold at quarterback, why the fuck would we project him to go above that? If Baker Mayfield comes in, I would like that way more for DJ Moore, and I will be a little bit higher on him. But where he's going right now is just insanity to me, right? End of third round, mid fourth round of drafts even is just not somewhere I need a thousand yard receiver. Those guys come and go, like I said, 22, 28, 28, 25. Number of guys that average the same number of fantasy points each year that DJ Moore does. And lastly on this list, Odell Beckham, man. Here's the thing with Odell Beckham. And I, this is so serious. I'm not even like trying to tell a bad joke. If there's an analyst out there that you hear say Odell Beckham is a good late round pick this year, don't don't listen to a single fucking word they say about any injured player ever. This is like so clearly obvious to me. 
here's what happens with the ACL tear that he has. When you have the first ACL tear, your, reti- your return timetable is nine to 12 months to be physically ready. Then there's a the whole mental aspect of it. What OBJ had doing it again, that timetable moves back from nine to 12 months to 12 to 15 months of a recovery timetable. It's science. It's not beat reporters telling you what he looks like at practice. 12 to 15 months, okay? And his shit happened at the very, very, very end of the year. There is no chance he's getting onto the field. I would be shocked if he played at all this year. I would be shocked if he got on the field before week 17 or 18, before the fantasy season is over, okay? I've never seen a more obvious, do not waste your last round pick on a dart throw who's not going to be on the fucking board. It's like you used a dart throw and you threw it at your fucking bed, sheet, pillow. I felt like animal right there. I got under pressure and I absolutely cracked. Don't judge me for it, but judge people who take Odell Beckham Jr. Those are the seven players that you should be letting your idiot league mates draft in 2022 fantasy football. Very, very clearly obvious guys that are going way too high and we are avoiding the shit out of them. That's all I got for today. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button and you can join our Discord to fuck around and chat and uh, show us some pics of idiotic things your league mates do throughout the year. I love you. I'm out.